Well, you're turning your attention is towards Cheltenham. What have you got to try and do just to just bridge that little gap of a couple of results have gone against your winning players? How, how are you going to get amongst them? Well, we've got, you've got to put it into perspective. We've got beaten by a championship team and the league leaders. No, I'd say that's far from a crisis. Could it have gone with the two big games? Yeah, they were. We've lost them both. We were. Two, not, not, not. Disastrous. Yes, if we'd have won them both, we'd have been in the back position. But it's not. We haven't, we haven't lost to Morecambe and Stevenage and thrown six points down this one in the league. You know, we've got knocked out of the cup competition and had a, an OK run. But. It might have been different if they'd have kept the previous manager in charge, but it wasn't. Then we've lost to the league leaders away. It's not. We've got to put a bit of perspective on it, and we're, what, we're fourth, fifth, we're fourth. We've got to put a bit of perspective on it and go, well, hang on a minute, let's not, you know, let's not throw the baby out of the bathwater and what have you. So we're in a good position and we've got 20 odd games, whatever it is, to, to make sure we have a great season. And a, a, another tasty game coming up, you know, against a very organised Charlton side that, you know, you've met a couple of times in the, the, their man who's been put, put in charge down there, Mickey Duff and sort of thing, so you know what you're going to get and it's, it's probably another ideal game that you're fancying. Of course. We're at home, you know, they'll play a similar way to uh, Swindon and we've got to be better. And we've got to be better than Charlton and better than our second half showing last Saturday. But uh, it's a game that you know that you get those three points from, and, and you, straight away you're back on track again. Yeah. Well, as we said, a week's a long time in politics, an absolute age in football, and you know that's that's how quickly things can change. On the positive uh, side of it, a couple of positives: Charlie Kirk, ten assists now, plus his goals. It's a nice little tally for him, isn't it? And for Tuma and then hey, well, you know he's doing what exactly. You hoped he was doing, it was a, a risk for you because he came from abroad to get into the team. But what a good record of goals he's having. Mm -hmm. They both do well, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Charlie needs to score more goals as well and not just be satisfied with assists because he's capable of it. Um, and I, I thought Tumor was, was terrific on Saturday. He was second half, I felt a bit sorry for him because we, we weren't playing any sort of quality into him really. But he was game, he was willing. And he, he got a goal that his performance deserved, I have to say. And I don't know what he's got, is it? 7, 8, yeah. 8 or 9, whatever it is. That's a terrific return. It's a terrific return. Why? Because he's a good player. He's a good player and we, I would say we're grateful for the, for the board and the chairman for believing us back in August. Because I don't know, I'm asking them sort of directly, but I'm sure it was a fairly, fairly big leap of faith on their part because of where he come from and, you know, a lack of pedigree in terms of English football, but he'd been played, his pedigree came from lots of other divisions, top divisions around Europe. Um, and well, I, th I think we're reaping them, them rewards of that faith that we've shown in him and our, our recruitment strategy. Where does his future lie? Where, where, where are you up to? I know you've got him to the end of the season. Is it one of those that you've got him here now that you'll well, talk and, and, and see what you can do with him for a long term? Well, he's got two years left on the fortune, so <laughs> unless that changes. <laughs> Fair enough, I didn't know that. So, so that, that is... Well, a, two and a half years left that is a, is a, Yeah, but you never know with negotiations. You'd love to keep him longer, wouldn't you? I'll be putting my two pound on the lottery. I'll go have a go. And if your numbers come up, Graham, I won't be buying a Porsche. I'll be buying a, a, a centre forward. <laughs> but, but that's good for you. Good, you know, that it's come off for both sides, you know. Of course. You know, I, I spoke to well, with Pedersen at, at Michelin uh, last week, week before, and they're, they're pleased that he's, he's in the team because it was, from their point of view, it was looking pretty bleak first 20 games. But I've said Tumor understood that and he relayed that back and he understood that what we were trying to do and how we were trying to integrate him initially um, into how we played. And, I think he said himself to you guys that he's learned a lot of Chris Porter. And I said Porter did ever so well, because um, he's a good player. Um, and and Tumor was playing, you know, check the trade games and you know, the odd game here and there. Um, to allow Porter to sort of carry on, if you like. 
Um, and then, but we knew that once Jim got a chance, he'd, he'd, he'd be a good player. He'd be about getting the ball in the right areas for him because of what we'd seen previous to him coming and what we'd seen in training with him. So, them two are going great. You know, we just need to stop him at the end. Last week you spoke about playing Ryan Winkle in, in the heart of defence. You said he's a professional footballer. He gets on with it. Have you, have you spoken to him of, of what's happened in the last couple of games for him? Because he, he was flying high, was he, in terms of your, your midfield play? And he's gone into a defence and <coughs> unfortunately been part of a couple of conceded goals. Yeah, but you know, you kind of portion blame to Ryan or any other player, whichever you, whatever you see fit and your your opinion. Um, Ryan understands. Ryan understands. He's got a terrific temperament and a good character about him. So, is that going to um, have a negative effect, or, or am I going to take a negative effect for anything that he does at centre half? Not particularly. Not unless he stops running around, mm. which he's never going to do because he's, he's a brilliant lad. Um, not unless he goes on two foot someone in the neck, which he's not going to do unless he's a brilliant kid. Um, does that mean that he can just? Play poorly and, and we accept it. No, but he hasn't. He hasn't. He's done that so well. Um, would, a, would a different centre half have done things differently? Of course they would. It's human beings in any day. But it's hypothetical. So you can't say, ah, so and so did a lot better. You don't know that. Nobody knows that because they're never able to quantify it. So we know where we're, we're short and we're trying as best to resolve that and that will help Ryan Wintle. So it's all hands to the pump to try and try and solve that little issue. Just one final one. Holly Lancashire, Eddie Nolan, Chris Porter. Are you getting the green light? They're on number. Right, that's better. Two of them are. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Chris was on the treadmill yesterday running. At a fairly good pace. Holly Lancashire has been running, although tentatively, but he'll be running all this week, all next week. Which is, you know, that's he caused the battle with Achilles injury. It's actually getting just to run, whereas Chris, it's more case of you know not running. It's the end stage of the running. It's the actual high intensity running. Um, so you know we, we're, we're moving forward with them. Eddie's still trying to get strength back in his leg from that um, the, the nerve that's impinged. So we, you know he's he's saying he's getting a bit more strength, but slowly. Well, you know that's a sort of still in that. Holding area where we're going right, which way we're going to go. Is it 